Brubs, you've got like five days left to secure an absolutely free bag. A free bagel sitting there on prize picks. They have Tom Brady for week one at 0.5 passing yards. 0.5. He throws one single yard on Sunday and you win on prize picks. Makes no sense not to. And if you deposit right now with our code BDGE, you're getting a 100% deposit match. So if you put down 10, you're going to have 20 to play with. That means you could put that 20 on Tom Brady and whatever el- whatever other square you love on there, okay? Tom Brady's sitting there looking precious, 0.5 passing yards. I don't know what y'all are doing if you haven't yet signed up. So go to prizepicks.com, go download the app. The link is in the description. And when you first deposit on there, $10 or more, up to $100, they will 100% match your deposit when using promo code BDGE. Go grab that Brady 0.5 passing yards. It's sitting there. And so are these eight players likely after your drafts. Most people have wrapped up their drafts. Maybe you got one tonight. Maybe you've got one tomorrow. 16 rounds, 18 rounds. Most of these players ain't that good, but they deserve an end of the roster spot because I think in week one, there's a chance we see a sprinkle of some of these guys end up on people's waiver wire articles. So let's get ahead of the game. You probably loaded the end of your roster with absolutely shit players, right? You started watching videos last week about guys you shouldn't have drafted. And then you're like, fuck, I drafted those guys. So let's drop them and fulfill their destiny with the eight players on this list. First of whomst, we're going to start off with Shout out to Tony. I know he's going to give me shit when he's editing this, but Jeffrey Wilson, there are three things that are very clear to me in San Francisco. One, they're going to run the ball a lot. Two, their fantasy running backs are going to be successful. Whoever is back there, it don't matter. It's a rotating carousel. And three, Jeff Wilson is the clear RB2 behind Elijah Mitchell. All right. There were like one or two reports throughout the, the throughout the summer that were like TDP is going to be the RB2. That happened like one time and everyone lost their fucking mind. That was like in June. Every single thing since then has pointed to Jeff Wilson being the guy right behind Elijah Mitchell. Elijah Mitchell's been banged up for almost the entirety of the summer. So you'll see a lot of this list is comprised of dudes behind dudes that are hurt. All right. So we look at the dudes going into the actual season. I've always said this, right? We can't predict injuries. I don't know when a guy's going to get hurt. But if you step on the field at less than 100%, you are 100% more likely to get injured. Okay. Because these other dudes are running at full speed. These other dudes are hitting as hard as they possibly can. And you're not able to combat that with your full strength. So if you're stepping onto the field with a soft tissue injury or whatever the case may be, you are at a monster disadvantage to get re injured. So we want to look at the guys directly behind those guys. So we have Jeff Wilson behind Elijah Mitchell. All signs point to point to Elijah Mitchell being good to go for week one, but he's also dealt with a lot of injuries. He missed games last year with the ankle. He's missed most of the summer with an injury. On top of that, they typically use a rotation. We don't know who's going to be the goal line back here. It might be Jeff Wilson. If something happens to Mitchell or if Jeff Wilson gets the goal line work here, that's going to be a very valuable position. And most people are going to be trying to add him come week two. So just grab him now before the season even Stott. Number two on this list, and what we're going to do first is tuck our shirts in. Y'all thought I forgot. Ain't never happening. Number two, Mr. Mo Ali Cox, tight end of the Indianapolis Colts. I ain't really talked about him much, and he is a very deep sleeper. So if you're in like a 10 team, 12 team league, you probably don't have to worry about him. However, you know, Jack Doyle's not there. They just don't have much in the passing game in Indianapolis. The number two target is completely up for grabs. Like Michael Pittman's going to get 150 plus targets. Jonathan Taylor is going to get 350 plus carries. Naeem Hines will get his. Outside of that, it's like, sure, I like Paris Campbell. Sure, some people like Alec Pierce. There's nothing concrete there. If Mo Ali Cox becomes a preferred red zone weapon for Matt Ryan, I mean, we've seen him have success with tight ends plenty of times. Kyle Pitts last year, obviously Tony Gonzalez and the years prior to that. This could be a very valuable player that breaks out this year. He's huge, obviously. He's been good in the passing game. He's a monster red zone target. I like Mo Ali Cox. I will keep an eye on him. They get Houston. They should be scoring a lot of points in week one. So I could see Mo Ali Cox creep up the list. The problem was always that no tight end in Indy ever got like the chance to be the guy. Mo Ali Cox right now is sitting there with a rookie behind him, Kyle Granson, no one that's ever made a fucking impact on this team. And Jack Doyle's gone. So I really like Mo Ali Cox as a guy to keep an eye on. Same thing with Kyron Williams, the rookie running back from Notre Dame in Los Angeles. This is a long shot, and this is like, you know, 16, 14, whatever team leagues, deeper leagues. Akers and Darrell Henderson both dealt with uh, tissue injuries going into this week one game against Buffalo on Thursday night. 
They didn't play Kyron Williams at all in their final preseason game. He sat with the starters. I think that was out of caution because they don't know. They didn't know if they were going to have both of their running backs. Both of them are probably going to go in a little bit less than 100%. They said they're good for week one. I don't know. I'm just saying that if one of those guys goes down, there's going to be a committee there regardless. I think that's the way that this Rams backfield is going to function for the year. And Kyron Williams will probably take the third down role, the pass catching role, right? If Akers goes down, if Akers gets hurt, re-injures his hamstring, whatever he's dealing with, then Darrell Henderson becomes the early down guy, probably the goal line guy. But Kyron Williams could become the two minute, four minute. He's a good pass catching back, a very, very good pass catching back. I could see him having a role here, a big one, if something were to happen to either of those two. And they're both coming into the game, coming off of multi-week soft tissue injuries. So I think you should keep an eye on Kyron Williams. You should also keep an eye on Eno Benjamin. I've been kind of fading James Conner. He's he's the RB2 here in Arizona. I've been fading James Conner most of the summer. I don't think I own him in any teams that I've drafted thus far. Eno's the two. James Conner's dealt with injuries throughout his entire career. With Chase Edmonds gone, I'm really, really interested to see if Eno Benjamin captures that Chase Edmonds role. He's a very talented player, caught a ton of fucking passes in college. He is a guy that could really, really be their third down guy. And I think looking at the makeup of their offense, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second, you look at Christian Kirk being gone. You look at DeAndre Hopkins suspended six games. You look at Chase Edmonds, obviously gone. And now Zach Ertz. I don't know what, what the deal is with Zach Ertz, but he's missed almost all of the summer two with the soft tissue injury. And he is questionable for week one. If at this point you're questionable for week one, like status is very much in doubt. And if you do play, you're also likely operating at less than 100%. So these targets, these vacated targets, like a lot of them are going to go to Hollywood, but a lot of them are going to go elsewhere, which is why I like Eno because he might have a standalone role. If something were to happen to the oft-injured James Conner, Eno becomes, I don't want to say a league winner, but a really, really viable RB2 slash flex play in your lineup. So I really like Eno Benjamin. And sticking with the Arizona Cardinals, two wide receivers here. We got A.J. Green and Rondell Moore. I'm not going to sit here and tell you like I know who's going to benefit from what, but I think A.J. Green was actually like really good at the beginning of last year. When he got the opportunities, he was producing at a pretty high fantasy level. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him operate as like the DeAndre Hopkins possession guy. Marquise is going to be a great deep downfield threat, probably some line of scrimmage type stuff to see if he can get in the open field and explode, but they need someone else to throw the ball to. AJ Green feels like the most like possession type guy they have out. You know, there's Hollywood Brown, there's Rondell Moore. Those are, you know, kind of specialty gadgety type players. And that could be good for Rondell Moore because Christian Kirk's a short area guy. Uh, Chase Edmonds is gone. So that was like line of scrimmage type targets. If Zach Ertz is gone, that's over the middle type targets as well. So that's where Rondell Moore could fit. And again, I don't know which of these two is going to blast off, but if Ertz misses time, then we have all of these targets from last year, just completely up for grabs. And someone besides Hollywood Brown has to get these targets. All right. So I would, you know, throw either AJ Green or Rondell Moore at the, at the end of my bench and kind of see what happens in week one and see who develops into that wide receiver two behind Hollywood Brown, because someone's going to do it. Kyler's too prolific of a quarterback not to make someone else produce in this offense. And in that same vein, Sammy Watkins and Randall Cobb. Most of the drafts that I've seen, Romeo Dobbs was drafted, right? He's the exciting, young, flashy rookie. He's still pretty fucking raw, though. If you watch him play, he still like feels like he's in a hurry a lot of the time. Some of his routes aren't that crispy, and he, like, he'll have balls just like fall out of his hands and shit that are kind of routine. He'll make great plays, and then he'll drop routine passes. It feels like he still has a lot of work to do in order to be someone that's trusted by Aaron Rodgers. And a couple of these players that I feel like we know for sure are obviously Alan Lazard was drafted in every one of your drafts, but I've seen a lot of drafts for Sammy Watkins or Randall Cobb were not drafted. I have a weird gut feeling that Sammy Watkins is going to have a good year or at least, you know, I don't know, 800 yards, six to seven touchdowns. It's not a great year, but it's better than what a lot of people are drafting like the 16th, 17th round. Randall Cobb could be a guy who's like a PPR factor. I, I don't know if he has anything left in the tank. I, he might just be complete cheeks at this point, but Rodgers loves him. So their starting three are going to be, it's going to be Lazard. It's going to be Watkins. It's going to be Randall Cobb. And it's Aaron Rodgers. He's the most accurate quarterback in the league. Back-to-back -back MVPs, 40 passing touchdowns, 4,500 passing yards. They got to go somewhere. And it is a complete unknown in the wide receiver depth chart. So I get it. Lazard is the one. Dobbs is flashy. But do not let Sammy Watkins and Randall Cobb just sit on your waiver wire because one of them has, it's probably going to be Watkins with his big week one. He goes, you know, six for a hundred and, and a touchdown. He's going to be one of the most added waiver wire players in week one. And we're going to look back and be like, how the fuck did we not see this? We are seeing it. Every single report was talking about how he trusts Watkins and he likes Watkins and Watkins is going to be a starter there. So I would throw Watkins at the end of your bench if you could before week one kicks off. Last guy on this list is Boston Scott, the running back for the Philadelphia Eagles. Miles Sanders is another guy that's dealt with a soft tissue, lower body 
injury basically the entire month of August. He is supposedly ready to roll for week one. I don't know how much you could trust him. Again, he's a, he's a guy that's dealt with injuries every single year since being in the NFL. I don't think they trust him to be the workhorse here. They've clearly like pushed towards a committee since he's entered the league. You got the injuries, you got the committee. Gainwell's the pass catcher, but Boston Scott has always been really, really reliable and good since Miles Sanders has come in the league, times when he's been out. So he's a guy that you know I don't love. I don't think he has a lot of standalone value. But I kind of want to see what shakes out in that backfield because we've got a lot going on there. We don't really know what direction to look in, what direction to push. And give me the guy that's absolutely free. You had to draft Miles Sanders, obviously. Most drafts, I, I think, probably had Kenneth Gainwell go in like the 11th to 13th round. Boston Scott was wildly undrafted. And uh, he's someone that's just yearly, yearly, annually slept on. All right. So Boston Scott's a guy I low key kind of like. You'll know after like week one or week two if you can drop him. So I think he's kind of a nice, you know, fixture that you just have one of those roster spots open that you recycle through. All right. Week one, let's get fucking ready, baby. And the best way to do that is by going to prize picks and hitting that absolutely free square. The link to download the app is right in my description. It's going to take you right to the app store, whether you're on Google or iOS. And when you deposit $10 or more for the first time, up to hundred bucks using promo code BDGE, they're going to hit you with a 100% deposit match. We're going to be making prize picks plays throughout the entire season. So just get on now. Anyways, we'll help you multiply the revenue. I love y'all. I'm out of here and I'll see you tomorrow.